This video is designed for people who are quite new to scanning and we've been teaching shoulder ultrasound for a very long period of time and we know the mistakes that people make at the beginning. So I'm going to talk you through a demonstration of a basic shoulder examination. We're going to cover all the main structures but I'm going to give you lots of tips around probe skills to ensure that you optimize your image. So remember you can slow down this video on the playback on YouTube so you can scan along with it. So the first thing you're going to do is to make sure that the patient is in the correct position. Now what do I mean by that? It's best to scan people without an arm on the chair because that will bring people into abduction and that can be a problem. So you can see the position, we're in a neutral position, the elbow, the humerus is vertical and we're going to start by checking the long head of biceps. So the first thing we do is before we place the probe onto the patient is we just check that the left side of the screen is on the left side of the probe so it makes sense. Now, and that makes sense to me from the position that I'm scanning in. So the first thing you do is don't start up here. You need to start a little bit further down the arm and just locate the humerus. Now this is the humerus here. I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit and we can see the bicipital groove, okay? So you're gonna find the bicipital groove. Now, if you haven't found it, just check that the patient is in a neutral position because a lot of patients will go into medial rotation and it will hide medially under that coracoid. The other reason you wouldn't have found it is because the bone is not bright. So can you see the bone is bright here? But if my, the wire on my probe is pointing forwards or up, you can see I'm not going to get a good image. So I need to tilt the probe and normally it means that the wire is pointing slightly down, which means we get a nice picture of the humerus. Remember, this bone needs to be bright. If the bone is bright, the soft tissue is right. So here's the bicipital groove. Now, if you've got an image like this, then we can optimize that. Or if you've got an image like this. Make sure you use your heel and toe of your probe to get the lesser and greater tuberosities lined up. So you can see the greater tuberosity, the lesser tuberosity, they are level. We don't want it to be like this and we don't want it to be like this. So just level up the probe, tilt to make sure the bone is bright and you're good to go. Now, when you're doing a transverse image of the biceps, this is the biceps tendon. You can see it goes dark, and that's because the bone is not bright enough. And if I tilt, the bone goes bright, and you can see the long head of biceps sitting within the groove. We're then going to follow that biceps slowly down towards the pectoralis major insertion, which is on the inferior aspect of the bicipital groove on the humerus. And as we do that, we need to make sure we're tilting the probe and healing and towing down the probe to ensure that the bone is bright and the tuberosities are level. So let's go down. As we go down, this is what will happen. You'll start to get a dark biceps because the bone is not bright. Make sure that wire is pointing down and you can see that that bone gets bright and there's the bicipital groove. Remember, on top of the biceps, we have the transverse ligament. Now, as we follow that further down, I'm going to continue tilting, continue tilting nice and slowly, keeping that bone bright. And then what we're going to look for is a structure that comes from the medial side. And here it is. And we're looking for that pectoralis major insertion, which we can see there attaching onto the humerus. You can see that, that nice fibula structure coming all the way from left to right. Over here, obviously on top, we have the deltoid with its multiple intramuscular tendons. We then have the short head of biceps medially underneath pectoralis. And then can you see here a muscle belly coming up as we go more distal? There, just going to turn the gain up a little bit. That is going to be the long head of biceps. OK, and that's coming from the tendon. We'll look at that. So you've got your pectoralis major tendon coming across. You can always stretch that or contract it if you want to. Here's the biceps tendon. And as we go more distal, here's the muscle belly coming off. Then we're going to follow the tendon up. Now, can you see it's gone a little bit dark? So by tilting, I can follow it up, 
keeping it in the middle, always keeping the biceps in the middle because that's going to mean that you avoid an isotropy and you're going to get a nice clear image. At the same time, tilting the probe to make sure that the bone is bright. Keeping it in the middle, as the lesser tuberosity comes up, make sure that you've got a nice level playing field on the lesser and the greater tuberosity. As we follow up, this is where it's going to get a bit tricky. Now the first thing to look out for is when does the lesser tuberosity fall away? So remember, the lesser tuberosity is more distal than the greater tuberosity. So as I come up proximally, this lesser tuberosity will start to fall away. Now, as soon as you see that starting to fall away, that's on the medial side of the probe, the long head of biceps, as it goes into the rotator interval, it will attach into the supraglenoid tubercle. We're going to get a change of direction of that biceps of pretty much 90 degrees. So we can't just keep scanning up, because if I just scan up, I get a rubbish picture. So look out for that lesser tuberosity. So as that lesser tuberosity falls away, we know that biceps is about to come out of the groove into the rotator interval. So what do we do? It's very simple. We need to get rid of the greater tuberosity, so we need to bring only the lateral side of the probe up. So what we're going to do is we're going to fishtail, we're going to fishtail this side of the probe, okay, less tuberosity falls away, we're going to fishtail this side of the probe, fixing that there to come up and over. By tilting the probe, the bone is bright, and now we've got a nice rotator interval view. So here's the long head of biceps sitting in the middle there. So just to go through that again, and then we'll freeze it, and I'll show you what we're looking at. As the lesser tuberosity falls away, you're going to get a change of direction of the biceps, which means I need to bring the top side of the probe up. But can you also notice that the probe wire is going from horizontal almost to vertical as I do it. So there's a big change of direction of that probe. Now what can we see here? We can see the long head of biceps sitting in the middle. Really nice picture there. That is being propped up. Have you ever noticed that the long head of biceps is sitting at a sort of 45 degree angle? That's because there is the um, glenohumeral ligament here. This is subscapularis, this is supraspinatus, but we are not looking in great detail at the cuff in the interval. We will look at them in greater detail later on. So what we have here is we have the ligament, we have the pulley system on top of, sorry, the superior fibers of subscap are gonna form this structure here, which is the coracohumeral ligament. And you can look for thickening on that with patients with adhesive capsulitis. Now, if we pop a little bit of a stretch onto the shoulder, that will stretch the ligament a little bit, and now you're starting to see that fibular structure here. And as it comes over the top of the biceps, it then splits and it goes underneath the supraspinatus. You can see here, this is the coracohumeral ligament, that ligament that's come over the top of the biceps, and that will form your rotator cuff cable. We'll talk more about that later. And that there is the coracohumeral in long section. Now remember, the coracohumeral ligament comes over the top of the biceps, it splits and goes over the top and underneath to encase that supraspinatus. And we'll pop a nice article on the video, which is a really good schematic representation of this quite complicated region of anatomy. And there you can see the biceps. So we're just going to do that once more. So we're going to follow the biceps all the way down from the pec to the pec, which we can see here, keeping the bone bright. And then as we come up, making sure that my tuberosities are level and that I'm tilting the probe to make the bone nice and bright and we can see the biceps in the middle there. As we come up, what are we looking for? We're looking for the lesser tuberosity to fall away. That indicates that there's gonna be a change of direction of the biceps, and then the lateral side of the probe, we come over, we take the probe wire from horizontal to vertical, and then we're in that rotator interval. You can see a little bit of bursal uh, plane, the bursal plane there, and if we just get the patient to move the hand in and out a little bit, you'll be able to see that move and there's that biceps tendon 
this is the rotator interval. So that is transverse on the bicep. But remember, one view is one view too few, uh, too few, particularly if you're looking for pathology. So let's go back down now. This is the transverse section of the long head of biceps. Now we need to look at this in long section. Okay. Now what we don't want you doing, because this is not going to develop your probe skills, is guessing. Don't just spin on it and think, oh, where is it? Where is it? And try and find it. Let's be more accurate than that. So the key thing when you're spinning from transverse to long is to keep the structure in the middle of the screen. So we'll pop the cursor there. Now, as we start to spin, if you're new to scanning, you may want to use two hands. Pop it in the middle and start spinning. Now, when you start spinning, you'll start to see those fibers of the bicep starting to go long. So you can start to see the fibers. Now, if as you're spinning, the tendon goes to one side, you must stop spinning. You don't have to spin back and start again, but you must stop spinning and then move the probe forward or back until you get it in the middle of the screen again. And then you can keep spinning. Keep it in the middle. Good. If it goes to one side, stop, pull it back and then keep spinning. And you can see here that we've got a lovely image of the long head of biceps in long section. Now we can follow that up into the rotator interval, but unfortunately we can't go very proximately to see the um, attachment onto the supraglenoid tubercle. As we come back down, can you see the biceps is diving down? So what we must do is toe down the probe and get on top of the structure because it's a fibular structure. If we're not on top of it, we're going to get an image like that and you start to see this anisotropy down here. So we toe down, we make sure we stay on that tendon and then we follow down. We follow it down and then you can start to see the musculotendinous junction. Okay, now let's go up. Now sometimes you'll get a little bit of fluid but also you may get a little pulsing vessel as you uh, go down, which we can see there, which is your anterior circumflex artery. So just bear that in mind. You'll see that in transverse and long, and then we can follow it up. Now, what you'll probably find, because obviously I've been scanning for a while, is as you're spinning, you slip off. Now, what I want you to start recognizing is the shapes of the bones. So I can tell you now that that is the lesser tuberosity because of the shape of the bone. So at the moment, I'm medial to the bicipital groove. If I move laterally, I'm in the groove, okay? If I go more laterally, I'm now on the greater tuberosity. Now, can you notice the greater tuberosity is more to the left of the screen because it's more proximal. If I go into the groove, get a nice image of the long head of biceps. And if I go medially, you can see the lesser tuberosity is more distal. So get used to going out of the groove, into the groove, out of the groove, and recognizing the shapes of the bones, because straight away, if I'm here, I know that's gonna be the lesser tuberosity. Now, sometimes people send me images and they think that this is the biceps here. That's not the biceps, because can you see the tuberosity is there so I'm not in the groove? Sometimes you can have the tuberosity, but you can still find some fibers in long of the biceps, which means that I'm oblique on the biceps. So to ensure you're not oblique on the biceps, you should be able to see the fibers proximally and you should be able to see the fibers distally. Now at the moment, can you see, I can see them proximally, but I can't distally. The machine, the image, is telling me what I need to do. So if I've got it on the left, but not on the right, I need to keep the left still, fishtail, so just move it one way. If it gets worse, go the other, and then you can see the biceps, and then I can follow it down. And then you just need to do that as you follow the structure down.